We have seen previously that if we're given the formula of a logarithmic function, that we can produce its graph. But what if we have to go the other way around? What if we have the graph of the function? We want to come up with a formula. Let's say that, for example, uh, we need to find the base a so that the graph f of x, which is equal to log base a of x, contains the point 2, 3. So we know that we have just a standard logarithmic function, no transformation whatsoever, but it contains the point 2, 2, 3 here, for which uh, we're aware that the base does affect how steep the logarithm is going to be. Uh, and so let's say that we have that point there. So we have the 2, two is the x-coordinate, 3 is the y-coordinate. So we have something like this. So we have this point, 2 comma 3. Since our logarithm hasn't been transformed whatsoever, we do know it also will contain just the standard x-intercept, 1, like so. And so if we try to think about what this logarithm would look like, uh, its, vert its vertical asymptote would still be the y-axis. We would see a graph something like this. So this is f. What if we know about this? What if we know this about the function? Like we could see this from the picture. Well, we can use this point to figure out what the base of the function is. Uh, because after all, if we were to look at f of 2, well, because of the point, we know that f of 2 is going to equal 3. But because of the function formula, we know f of 2 is going to equal log base a of 2. And so we have this equation, log base a of 2 is equal to 3. Now, we want to solve for a, but like, how do you, how do you solve for a right here? Um, we can't really move the 2 over because of the logarithm. What we want to do is actually move the log base a over. That's something we know how to do. We can switch it from logarithmic form to exponential form. This would look like 2 is equal to a cubed. All right, so we switched it from logarithmic form to exponential form. But in this situation, the unknown is actually the base. The power is what we know, so we can get rid of the 3. We can move the 3 back to the other side, for which... We take the cube root of both sides, and we see that here the base a should equal the cube root of 2, for which we can approximate that, but we're just going to keep it exact form right here. So this logarithm, the logarithm, the standard logarithm that goes to the point 2, 3 must have been base uh, cube root of 2. Now, of course, things can get a little bit more complicated. Like, look at this picture we see right here. We see that we have a logarithm which goes through the point... 1, 0. That looks like the standard uh, x-intercept. It also goes through the point 2, 1. But look at, the, look at the vertical asymptote. The vertical asymptote is at x equals 3. How does that affect things? Yikes. Well, in order to, in order to decide what's going to go on here, what I want to do is first convince you that the most general form of a logarithm is this formula we see right here. f of x equals log base a of x minus h over b. That's the, that's the worst case scenario when it comes to a logarithm. And how do I know that? Well, in a previous video, we saw that the most general exponential function we could graph would look like y equals c a to the x plus k, right? Where the parameter c, which gives you the vertical stretch, the base a, and the vertical shift k, that's the only thing you can do with a, with a exponential function. All, ev all other transformations can be baked into this cake. Well, let's sw solve for x in this situation right here. Let's Let's compute the inverse function. So actually, if I were to swap x and y, you would get x equals c a y plus k. And so if you solve for y in this situation, right, the first thing to do is subtract k from both sides. You're gonna get uh, you're gonna get x minus k is equal to c a to the y. Then you're gonna divide both sides by c. So you're gonna get a to the y is equal to x minus k over c. And then you switch it to logarithmic form. You get y equals the log base a of x minus k over c like so and so you can see what happened is now we get something like this that although the labels h and b are different from k and c um, i switched these to be h and b because we use h for horizontal shifting and we use b for uh you know vertical uh, horizontal stretching and compressing and things like that but this right here if this is the most general exponential function then the most general logarithm would look something like this or again what we see right here that is, to graph an uh, exponential function, we only need vertical transformations. We just need a stretch and a shift vertically if we know the base, all right? Because of that, since, since vertical transformations turn into horizontal transformations when you go to the inverse function, the most general logarithm can be expressed using just, just horizontal transformations. So how do these, ver these horizontal transformations affect 
the graph. Well, the standard logarithm should have it should have as its vertical asymptote the x, the y axis, excuse me. But this one right here has gone one, two, three steps to the right. And so imagine that if you have your graph and you shifted everything to the right, that's the only thing that's going to change this vertical asymptote because the horizontal compressions and stretches won't affect the y axis. Uh, and the base, the base doesn't affect the y axis as well. So the only thing that can move the vertical asymptote will be this shift right here. And so I want you to I want you to be aware of that H, H right here is going to correspond to the location, the location of the vertical asymptote, which in this in this graph here we can see very quickly that because the vertical asymptote is located at x equals three, we see that H is going to equal three in this situation. All right. Now it's going to be a positive three. That's important to remember. If we had like over here, it was like negative two, then we plug in a negative two because you get a negative negative two, which give you a plus two. It's a shift to the left. All right. So the location of the asymptote tells you the shift. We did the exact same thing for exponentials. After all, as we move the horizontal asymptote up and down, that would change the vertical shift. It was the same number. We see the, the inverse relationship going on here. The location of the vertical asymptote gives you the horizontal shift. Well, how did we find the location or how do we figure out how much of a vertical stretch or compression happened to uh, how, how, how did that affect an exponential? Well, we looked at the y-intercept and the distance it was from the horizontal asymptote. We're going to do the same thing, but we're going to take the x-intercept. We're going to take the x-intercept and measure the distance from the x-intercept to the vertical asymptote. Take the x-intercept and minus the vertical asymptote uh, in this situation here. So we're going to take one. So this, this number right here is going to be this B value. So to find B, we're going to take the difference, the difference between the X intercept and the vertical asymptote. So we see in this situation, B is equal to one minus three, which gives us a negative two. All right, so let's kind of summarize what we have so far. So what we know about our function is the following. f of x is equal to the log base a. We don't know what that is yet, but we're going to get x minus 3 over negative 2. We have that negative 2 in the denominator. Now, it's a little bit disconcerting to have a negative inside of a logarithm. It's not actually wrong, but I'm actually going to rewrite this as the log base a of 3 minus x over 2. That makes me feel a little bit happier here. Now we're in a situation where we have to figure out what is the base A. And that's where we're going to use the point we haven't used yet. We know the point 2 comma 1 is on the graph. I'm going to plug that into the equation to solve for the, the, the yet still missing base. So we know that f of 2 is going to equal 1. But we also know it's going to equal the log base A of 3 minus x. Well, 3 minus 2 actually over 2 like so for which we can simplify this, we get the log base a of one half. This is supposed to equal one. And just like we did on the previous example, we're gonna move the base a to the other side. And this then gives us one half is equal to a to the first, which is just equal to a. Now, if, if we had some other number than one, we would then have to, uh, we'd have to, you know, take a square root or a cube root or whatever. And so this is this is a great point for us that when it comes to logarithms, we like the x-intercept and we like the point uh, where the y-coordinate is equal to 1. We saw the same thing with exponential functions. We like the y-coordinate and we like the place where the x-coordinate was equal to 1. That is, we like the y-intercept and when the x, when the x-coordinate was 1. For logarithms, it's the opposite. We want the x-coordinate and when y equals 1. But if we could do it with any point here, because again, we could take we could take like a, sec, a square root or cube root like we did on the previous example. So since the base is equal to one half, we now have our function f of x equals the log base one half. As much as you might not want a fraction right here, it is perfectly acceptable. The base of a logarithm can be any positive number other than one. So we get the log base one half of three minus x over two. And this function right here will then produce the graph that we started off with right here.